Hello everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Good I caught the <laughs> speaker not being on <laughs> right in time. Otherwise, like the other times I would go for about half an hour and then you realize it. So uh, sorry for a delay today. And we'll have a short um, live stream today. I have an appointment at 3, so we are like 45, 50 minutes together. I slept late last night. I slept about 5 o'clock in the morning, so I got up late and everything got late. So, sorry about that. Amount 21 Male India, thank you for that. <laughs> Aman says, okay, so as yesterday I told you about that girl when I was in contact with her, she used to glorify her guy friend who had muscles <laughs> and used to criticize me or call me skinny. I'm not really skinny, all right? And a low stamina guy. She never seemed my stamina. All right. 
sometimes used to call me I'm not manly because I don't drink and drive motorcycle in high speed. No, you're doing the right thing. Those guys are just, you know, showing off. <laughs> so stay with your own, in your own lane and you're fine. And uh, roam around city alone because I don't like that. Okay, good for you. Is there any question here somewhere, Aman? Because I can see a laundry of uh, letter. <laughs> I don't want to be reading your uh, <laughs> book here. It says, I just don't have a heavy voice or something. I'm comfortable with my current voice, okay? Or like having a muscular body. I'll have it. I'll have it if I... Go to the gym. Yeah, go to gym. You know, you, you need some muscle anyhow, regardless of the girls want it or not. For your health, longevity, and circulation, you need exercise, cardio, and weightlifting. <clears throat> Look, <clears throat> no boasting intended, but in reality, it is important to keep fit for health reasons and also to feel good about yourself. The older you get, the more difficult it becomes to stay fit unless you have worked it throughout your life while you were young and made yourself used to exercise as part of your routine of life and part of your enjoyment, not as a duty, as something you like to do because you focus on its outcome and its results in you, in your health, ability, agility, and all the things that we need to be as good a shape as we can for challenges that life throws at us, whether it's <clears throat> physical um, fitness or mental fitness, both are necessary. So you got to engage yourself in such exercises that will uh, bring that balance physically and mentally and keep you healthy and fit. For different times, especially when you get older, like me, nobody believes when I'm in the gym and I'm working out that I'm 67 years old. They just don't think it's possible. But you know, we are. If we if we continue our training and we, uh, you know, um, methodically and continuously do it, little training every day, it just helps us, especially in the older age, which uh, nature catches up to us. And regardless of what kind of lifestyle we've had, it's going to not be so kind. So the better, cleaner lifestyle you have throughout your life, a more chance you will have less of a problem when you get older, and more fitness and getting used to that. It gives you something to do when you're older, plus keeps you healthy and helps you with cir circulations. And the things that the doctors and researchers will tell people at the old age they should do to stay healthy, it's already become part of your routine, and it's not a chore for you to attend to it because it's part of your daily life. And that would be a helpful thing for that age. And he continues, says, my only question today, all right, we're getting there now. <clears throat> Two years later, we have a question. <laughs> says, her, her stuffs, which she said really hurt me. Why? Who is she? Why are you giving so much credit to her? <laughs> Who is she? <laughs> what pull does she have on the world, on your opportunities, on the events of life? Nothing. She's just another soul, another human being who's lost in her own way, trying to find her own way and trying to grab to this and that and make fun of this and side with that and to make her feel good. Otherwise... What way could her words have on you? Nothing. If you allow it, it will hurt you. If you consider the source is not anything special or reputable or detrimental to your life and to opportunities in the world, then you don't give a shit. It doesn't matter what they say. There's always going to be somebody who's not going to like somebody and somebody who's going to like the same person makes no difference to that person's quality of life and opportunities unless that person makes those opportunities come together by his own initiatives. It doesn't matter what people say. And says, uh, hurts me. Okay. 
because I also have HOCD, which more attack saying I'm not manly. Yeah, but you know, again, what they say is no different than what the brain itself may conjure up that you're supposed to and you've learned how to treat intrusive thoughts. So many of the things that other people say, they're also considered intrusive thought, and you should treat it the same way you would treat it as if it was coming from your own brain, which is a result of malfunction, and we all know about that. So whatever they utter, you treat it the same way you would utter intrusive thought coming from your own brain. And so uh, makes no difference. It wouldn't affect you. It might hurt your ego or the image you have of yourself or the image you want people to see you uh, as, but in reality, you don't get hurt. It's only the image that it gets hurt, so to speak. And the images are there, so you won't get hurt. It's an image. You know, you have so many images during the day. You know, you go to buy milk, you have an image of a shopper. If you're working at the store, you have an image of a storekeeper. If you're taking a bus to go to school, you have an image of a passenger. If you're driving the bus, you have an image of a bus driver. If you're at school, you have an image of a student. If you're teaching a class, you have an image of a teacher. You come to your parents, you have an image of a son or daughter. If one has children, there's an image of a father or mother. So these images, depending on what you're doing, is being used, utilized for doing what it is that you are about to do. And then it, right after, it's of no use. It disappears and another image is captured and used for another thing that you want to do during the day. So these images are there for you to feel unhurt. The images get hurt, but the images are virtual. There's nothing real about them. But they are the shield. So in other words, you're always safe. No matter what they say, your ego, your image, the way you want people to see you can get hurt. But in reality, you don't get hurt any way, which way. Only maybe image, emotion, ego, and then you know how to handle those as we have speak, talked about it before previously. So, and do things that makes you feel more confident, such as going to the gym and training in your level, not ex extraordinary, just enough to keep yourself feel good and fit and keep it up and in time with all the other um, opportunities and accomplishments that you will have in your life you will feel much much better as you progress in life clavis clovis says hello hello clovis and please you don't hear me are you kidding me Can you guys hear me or am I talking to myself? Could someone tell me if you can hear me? <clears throat> Could you please respond to me, guys? Because Clovis says we don't hear you. Is it for now or is it 10 minutes ago? Oh, you hear me good. Okay, good. So... And Clevis, please uh, you tell me. Oh, you have. Okay, good. So, Malik from UK. Mm, and Malik, UK, male, 35 UK. Thank you for that. And uh, <clears throat> Clovis says, male, 25 France. Oh, Bonsoir, monsieur. Comment ça va aujourd'hui? Oh, comment ça va ce soir? Says, my ex started to see a guy one week before she broke up with me. It usually happens that way. Girls usually don't break up unless they have somebody. It's not 100% true in every case, but mostly this is the rhythm that uh, women have. They usually don't break up and they claim that they want a space, especially younger girls, like in up to 30, 35, or any age, I guess. <clears throat> they say, oh, uh, you, know, you know, I need some space. That I need some space means they've met someone, and they want to see how that goes. 
and then these space thing takes longer and they become quiet they don't respond in a way of okay the space is over it's been a week two weeks what is it then i want space is a subtle way of saying i want to break up because i met someone but they don't dare saying it because they don't know how it happens they don't want to burn the bridges and they want to linger you on further until maybe if this didn't work another one you they will find and they'll say they want space again so they say i want space and if it didn't work with the other guy that they're seeing on the side they come back says well, okay let's do this let's do that let's try again and then when they find somebody else they say oh well you know i don't think it works let's have some space and then again they try that this is the style that is going on these days which is unfortunate so um <laughs> so when you th you say that uh, you know she uh, was seeing this guy a week before breakup that's a typical of most girls today this is five year five year relationship then uh, she jumped to him directly and invited him to our home when i was absent for yeah i remember that and then what's the rest of the story uh Clo clovis i'm waiting for the part two All right, uh, we go to Mako until we get the part two. Uh, I guess you guys can, if you want to write it in separate parts, you can write all the parts first on your uh, note. And then once all is ready, then you plug them, one, two, three. So I'll have all the parts right after each other so we don't have to break the conversation or wait for the next part coming through. So Mako from UK says, question, Mako, what's your age and gender? Oh, there it is, male, 35 UK. Okay, thank you for that. It says, question, I get very creative thoughts, thinking, trying to solve problems in my head, trying to figure it out. Is that me or OCD? How do I define OCD? Well, OCD, you would know it's something that doesn't let you go on unless you do certain or perform certain physical ritual or certain um, mental ritual without any physical um, activities attached to it, which is Dr. Philipson calls that pure all. That's his uh, coin of phrase, meaning it's a mental OCD rather than the having any physical um activity attached to it such as when you click the light switch off and on 10 times instead of one that's got physical or wash your hands it's got physical uh, activities attached to the ocd that you gotta wash it and wash it and wash it but then there are thoughts intrusive thoughts and things there's no physical activity but you keep going over it and it continues and data hunting and stay on it ruminating that's also uh, form of OCD, which is, you know, uh, terrible as well. <laughs> That's why we learn how to deal with it. And says, um, so, you answer your question, those creative thoughts that you call, depend on what it is. If you're trying to invent something, well, that's how you should be. But if you got nothing positive coming out of it, it's just occupying your brain and turning the wheels, well, yeah, that's OCD, and you got to uh, stop trying to go to the end of what it is that you think exists at the end of this train of thoughts. Stop traveling. Stop, stop going through that rabbit hole and simply say, I don't know, and I don't care to know. There are a few ways of stopping thoughts. As I mentioned before, if someone asks you what's your name, you say, Mako, if that's what your name is. So there's no thought involved in this. It's instinctive information is available to you and you spit it out. If they say where you're from, say UK. No thinking involved. Instinctive information, then you spit it out. But if somebody says, how long does it take from UK to go to Japan with an aircraft of two Chrysler engine, each 10,000 horsepower, 
and 20 passengers. Weight of the plane is this, and this much fuel is available. And how long does it take for you with this speed to get to Japan? Well, then, from the time this question is posed to the time that you figure out how long it takes with that aircraft and that kind of a load, there is, needs to be a certain figuring out time, figuring out process, a, a formula to put together to figure out something. That figuring out process from the time the question is posed to the time you come up with the answer, it's called thinking. Now, once you come up with an answer and say, oh, okay, the formula and all the calculation shows it's 22 hours. Once you come up with that answer, thinking stops. The brain gets a clue, the cue that it's solved. That question is answered. Thinking stops. But there are two other ways that you can stop thinking. And one is you start doing the calculation and you can't find out the answer. You don't have the formula or you don't know how to. Anyhow, you're not able to find the answer of how long it takes to go to Japan with that criteria after you're trying and solving the problem and you can't figure it out. Then you say, I don't know. Thinking stops because the brain gets a cue that you can't figure it out. So it lets go. There's another way that you can stop it is that without doing the calculation or trying to figure out anything, once the question is posed, you just say, I don't know. And I don't want to know. Thinking stops. So these are some of the ways that you can actually stop the process of thinking because the brain gets the mandate, gets the order, gets the cue, direction that not necessary anymore. But if you give it a signal that it is necessary, your intention is to go further, well, it's a machine. And it's an automatic machine looking for signals, electrical signals, and the, your electrical signal to it is that I'm thinking to find something. Uh, whatever it is, it will do the job for you until it receives that order that I found it, or I can't find it, or I don't care to find it. So... For that reason, this is what you can do. And through the videos, we've discussed it further and further. And always remember, guys, that I do have a site, mindthatseekstruth.com, www.mindthatseekstruth.com. You can always go there, make an appointment with me for Skype consultation, Skype chat, and then we'll discuss what's concerning you whether it's about relationship, breakup, thoughts, consciousness, fear, desire, ego, or OCD, OCD subsets, and so on, then we'll discuss it one-on-one -on, -one on Skype. Tico says, hello, male 15, Canada. Ooh, okay. HOCD makes me think that I don't want to get rid of it. Yeah, I have a video on that that makes you think that you actually purposely coming up and um, creating these intrusive thoughts, which is not true, but uh, you need to watch this video that might help you. There it is. So why does it seem as if you created the intrusive thoughts? And this could give you some pointers how to, what that is and what to do and so on and so forth. There we go. I put the link up here. It'll probably go through eventually. There we go. And Aman says, I want to join a gym, but I feel like social shyness to go and start a gym and everybody looking at me. Well, look, you know, this is as uh, wise as if you say, I'm hungry, I have money, there's a restaurant, but I'm shy to go and ask for food. You want to fill your stomach? You got to go in there, order some food, and eat it. It doesn't matter how hungry you are and how you're going to eat that food, how eager you are to eat that food, how hungry you are, and if you're going to be having proper 
the fork and uh, knife use or you're just going to go with your hands and eat it. You're hungry. Either way, you got to feed yourself. So if you're going to be concerned about what other people think, you'll be concerned about what other people think all throughout your life. You'll never get done until you are very good at what it is that you want to get done. So people would think of, oh, he knows what he's doing. Well, if you know what you're doing, what the hell are you doing in the gym? Well, you're already fit. You don't need any more fitness. So what are you doing there? Everybody's in the gym to improve. Whether you are novice or expert, doesn't matter. You're supposed to be there for your own purposes, not to please somebody else to give you a kudo. That's lack of confidence that you're looking at what people say about you and you're willing to do anything, including depriving yourself from food or from physical exercise, just so that you won't be subjected to some other people think that, oh, you don't know what you're doing. Who gives a shit? Live your life. Stop this uh, pussyfooting around the bushes and being so uh, low steam and low test. Go for it. Go and do what it is that you need to do. In time, you will not be looking like this anymore. But you will always look like this if you don't go in and exercise. Who cares what people say? You go and continue exercise for a year and then continuously for your life. You'll feel good. You'll be stronger. And eventually people won't even have a chance to say anything that you think they might say. And you think they might say. They may never even say that. They're busy with their own thing. You know, only stupid people try to look at other people and say, oh, how skinny is he? So big fucking deal. That's why he's there, because he's skinny. He wants to, you know, grow and be bigger. What's it with you? Those are weak people who would talk like that. And if they do, who cares? What are you worried about? Why are you worried about what's in other people's head? They're not going to tell you or they're not going to tell each other, oh, look at that kid. He's so skinny. They're not going to say that. And if they say it inside their head, what do you care what the, uh, what do you care about what people say in this, inside their heads? None of your business. Uh, you want to control everybody's mind that, oh, I want to have a neon sign that everybody on top of everybody's head that says, oh, Aman is here and he's okay. He's not skinny. We don't we don't mind him. What? Go do your own thing. Stop this bullshit and improve yourself. And sometimes you may have to, you know. Start from scratch, and that's what it takes. So big deal, big deal. Somebody says whatever they say. Who gives a shit? Have a little thick skin. All right. Don't piss me off. Ugly stick is here. Is be careful. <laughs> All right. Princeton says, Master. <laughs> Hello, Princeton. Says you have passed the live talk. Press the live talk. This time, oh yes, thank you. Don't scare me. I thought I didn't again. <laughs> this time, uh, no efforts wasted. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right. Now we have MWCND17. That's a code for I don't know what. It says, hi, Mehran. Mehran Jan. Oh, that must be a Persian speaking friend. It says, hi, Mehran Jan. How are you? Hope everything is good with you. I don't, if you remember, me it was like two years ago i found your channel i'm very uh, i guess glad to see you again i'm oh, very happy to see you again well um obviously you've been here before but maybe you can give me some clues as far as any conversation we had your case or something you asked or where you from right now like where you living and maybe I can recognize the location or your age. Give me your age. And if you're male or female, <laughs> lots of things. Like, like two years, you've forgotten uh, the protocol here, too. <laughs> Stephen is here. He says, hello, Mehran. Hello, Stephen. And Stephen says, male, 42, Los Angeles. Thank you for that. Stephen says, wake up, uh, woke up today and staying a little busy. Mine still goes into the memory. But remember, we talked about it. Look into the Skype and see what I wrote. Every time that mind goes in the memory, understand there is a pleasure in pain. And you are seeking that pleasure, even though it's painful to think of her in your memory. So you're going to the memory to get the pleasure of thinking of her while thinking of her gives you pain. So there is a pleasure in the pain. And you need to understand that you don't want that pleasure. 
Hmm? So don't go into the memory because you know memory is not real and all it does, it keeps you there. It triggers the desire file, prerequisite for desire to be born, and then you desire her. That's the worst thing that you can do. That's why you don't want to go into the memory to get certain kind of a feeling of, oh, everything is the same because the, in the memory things are recorded and you get that oh, uh, dopamine by remembering all those things. But while you get that, you're conditioning your brain through neuroplasticity that if you go into the memory, you get dopamine. So you get addicted to the dopamine and you keep going into the memory to get the dopamine. While you're in there, prerequisites for desire to be born, that file is triggered and it will be coming up and then make you desire her because you were there. So any way you look at it, you're training yourself to never get out of the situation that you're trying to get out. Going into the memory triggers the desire file without you noticing it. Also gives you dopamine by feeling things are the same because you remember the memory and all that. And dopamine is addictive. So you're training and rewiring yourself to constantly seek that dopamine, which before you know it, because in a striatum, goal finding and reward finding center and habit center are all on top of each other. So every time you get the dopamine, you get addicted to it. And before you know it, you no longer go into the memory just to get the dopamine, feel good. You're going in there because it has become your habit. That's going to be the time that's going to be tougher than ever to break it off. So my suggestion to you is stop being a pussy and start going into the reality world, not going into the memory, because in the memory there's nothing but bullshit. Start living and living life is outside in the actuality of the world, not in the memory. That's a cop out laziness and that derails you from what you want to accomplish. I said that and you should remember that. That's going to be recorded and you can read and um, listen to it over and over when it's uploaded. Now, I'm sure that you guys know you won't get these information and these sort of uh, logic and understanding of the movement of the psyche anywhere else on the net. And if you know that, then you bloody well appreciate and promote this channel any which way you can. Because these things are gold. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and <laughs> mind that six, man. Right? <laughs> There's my guy again. <laughs> says, hello, my lovely Mehran. And hey, you better be a woman who talks to me like that. <laughs> Say, remind me of your uh, age, gender, where you're tuning in from. Says, this is non-stop smoking stop husband. What? <laughs> this is non Oh, this is non-stop smoking stop husband. Me glad to say stop smoking non-stop already. And me, Rihanna is very smiling. <laughs> okay, darling. <laughs> I hope you're a woman and I'm calling you darling. I'm assuming that, uh, just for the record. <laughs> I think you are probably from a different uh, uh, background, uh, country, language. Uh, anyhow, it would be great if you let me know your age, gender, where you're tuning in from, uh, which city, which country, how old you are, and what your um, gender is, man or woman. And I remember, are you talking about the fact that your husband kept smoking cigar in the house and uh, we were talking about it the other day, I guess? Is that what you're referring to? Are you the same person? <laughs> so... You know, it's not easy for me to remember all, but I do have that. Anyhow, thanks for the um, for the um, screen name. It's very cute. I noticed it last time, too. Mind that six may run. Okay. <laughs> all right. And Mako UK says, thank you. You're called. Welcome. Rolling on. Oh, my goodness. It's been a long time. Let's see. Rolling on's name was... Rolling on, Brad? No, I don't remember exactly. 
Oh, I got to be quick because I've got a three o'clock. Um, oh, okay, good. Oh, hang on. Let me cancel this so we can be here longer. That's fine. Okay. All right. So that's good news. So we can stay a little longer. And mind that seeks Mehran says, oh, rolling on. Rolling on says, hi, Mehran. Have a great day. Thank you, dear. But rolling on, um, you, are, you are a lady, as I remember. Yeah? And you're from U.S. somewhere, no? Help me out, guys. What happened to you guys? You're supposed to let me know gender, age, and where you're tuning in from. <laughs> and mind that seeks... Um... Mind that seeks Mehran says, My question is, I shower with my son... When there, I see son's penis when he was showering. Is it normal that mine is smaller? Son is it? So you're a man, are you? First of all, make it clear to me. You know, remind me who you are. Um, the person who was talking about this husband smoking was a woman but you seem to be a man i'm a bit confused and your question if it's legitimate it seems rather um trollish because now i'm kind of waking up that maybe you're neither one of the people that i thought you are because this question is trollish like it's very uh, silly and stupid and looks to me that you're just trolling me, and that's not nice. All right. So let's go to Clovis. Clovis says, is good sex important to make our relationship good, or we should have a good relationship to have a good sex? Well, if you don't have a good relationship, you can have good sex, but it would most probably be just physical sex. And a physical sex is not as good as a physical and emotional sex. And the emotional part will come when you have a good relationship. And even if the sex is not as good physically, but when you have emotion involved, sex becomes much better. So it is always good to have a good relationship. It increases the quality of the sex. You become more patient, more loving, more caring toward each other, and more aiming to please each other rather than just have a mechanical experience and done and over with. Steven says, I know for sure I'll find someone else, but at the moment I'm not interested. It's like I'm um, just hanging around still. Well, that's you. That's on you. That's on you because you're in control of your uh, thoughts and emotions and the thoughts that are not suitable to helping you move on and having the correct uh, proper emotions for you should be switched, should be changed. And you're not doing that. You're just staying there, staying with that thought as if that would be a sin to move on as if that would be a disrespect to the emotion you once had towards this girl. You're just really fucking yourself instead of being a little bit tough 
and you know stop being a pussy and start being a man as you should be so just don't give a fuck she left good ridden why don't you guys become men as you are why you guys become pussies when you guys break up and you become worse than girls why don't you stay as manly as you are when you're not breaking up and remember this is part of being a man they break up we get so sad and sorry but we are men we go forward and we find another woman and we give the good life to her that deserves it if she attends to you she loves you she cares about you you give your attention to that woman not to the one who is giving her attention to someone else what kind of a treatment are you giving yourself and why do you give such a high echelon to a woman who's actually not offering you what you ask to receive um, in response to what you offer her why are you constantly being so gracious for no reason when a woman is not giving you anything but you still give your attention to her why take your attention go somewhere else that has values and if you don't do that that's on you you will stay like a piece of nothing that is constantly being walked on by that piece of shit that left you and you're instead of rising and going and building you're just waiting for her to stop walking all over you and say okay come here kneel here i'll give you some food that's bullshit which is in form of emotion don't ask don't be a beggar get off your ass and stop these entertaining these thoughts and be interested in other women be interested in other women because they worked a lot more than the one who left you that's what i have to say about that uh Give me a second, guys. I will give you station identification just to open that window because I want more fresh air to come through. So one moment, please. One minute and a half. all right so please i can only help you guys if you guys want to help yourself i cannot be constantly like a parrot or recording keep saying the same things and you guys keep doing the same shit that you've been doing you'll never get out of this shit so stephen grow a pair and listen to the stuff that we talked about and not just listen do them otherwise all you're doing you're never getting anywhere getting deeper and deeper and you're pissing the hell out of me <laughs> all right don't piss me off get off your ass go make a life and have fun 
life is short all right this chocolate is pretty good if you haven't tried it it's a good chocolate the green part i guess is not showing <laughs> The German chocolate, 81% cacao, and very delicious. What do you have here? Clovis says, you jumped my question, did I? Amy Parrot says, me, male 47, hair 40, IOCD partner. What is it, a shorthand? <laughs> shorthand <laughs> sentences. Is withholding an important piece of info. She lied to me once about having been a stripper. She lied about who a man she called a friend really was. Army parrot. He was actually worried and saw each other through many years. Oh, she was actually married and saw each other through many years and has other sketchy stories. All right. Uh, says, no, I'm not afraid. I'll find something. For example, when we started dating, she asked an old ex to fix a house item. She said nothing happened, but I know it was really odd. Okay. Well, now you know, so you have a decision to make. You can't blame her or keep her responsible for not telling you things because she wanted to be with you yeah it's not honest but now you know so make a decision now Rieger Nick Rasko hello I'm a 30 year old woman View, view, oh, viewing from Houston, Texas. Oh, Texan girl. My favorite type of girls. <laughs> Always warm. Texas conservative thinking. Uh, real women are mostly from Texas, I guess. Everywhere, but Texas in particular. And your accents drive me nuts. <laughs> and... Um, she says, you already answered my question. Thank you. You're quite welcome. I don't know what the question was, but thanks for being here. Clovis says, you jumped my question. I didn't. I answered it. Clovis says, my ex and new boyfriend... In every question, please let me know your gender, age, because I don't remember. I know you said it in the other one, Clovis, but I don't remember. My ex and new boyfriend. Okay, I guess you're a man. Make love in our bed in front of my stuff. She has a low self-esteem. So her behavior didn't affect me, but I feel a strong desire to tell her how selfish and immature she is should it should i well i don't understand why you guys are still living in the same place and if you are bringing someone in the same bed that you both still sleep is not acceptable and you should tell her that and um why do you at least separate your beds until you one of you moves out? 
because why do you sleep together if you're not together? And so if she brings someone when you're at home, it would be at her own bed, not the bed that you guys share. That's disgusting. Mind the six Mehran says, I'm 52 male. I borrowed wife's account to, to message. She's watching with me. Yeah, but I, I don't understand what kind of a question is that. That doesn't seem a legitimate question. That you say you take shower with your son and he has a bigger penis than you have. I mean, what kind of question is this? That doesn't tell me anything about you. It just tells me you're, to, you're a troll because it doesn't make sense to me. And it's not appropriate. So I wonder what's your motivation here. And Mako says, um, how is everyone this evening? Okay. And Regimik Rasko says, hi, Mako. Oh, you're talking to Mako. All right. <laughs> okay. Princeton says, Master also tried your advice in dandelion root tea. Ah, there it is. It does taste like coffee. Does it keep you up? No, not at all. Through No, not at all. It's actually it tastes a little bit bitter, something between tea and coffee. It's got no caffeine whatsoever. And uh, it's very, I like it because it's now my favorite tea. It's very good for your heart. It's very good for your circulation. It's got lots of nutritional values. And if you find dandelion tea, you just clean it up in the, your back. Usually they grow everywhere. In your back rod, pull it out, clean up the roots, and peel it off and clean it, and you can eat it. That's what I've heard, but you do your own research. AA says, I'm 33, 32 male doctor from the UK have been with a girl for five years. She's 29, also a doctor, and we have busy lives. I've been patient for the last two years to decide on marriage, but she's still indecisive. Well, then you pull that offer out from the table and tell her, okay, dear, I understand you're not ready, and um, I appreciate that, and I respect that. So I wish you will find what you're looking for. I am ready at this time, and I don't want to be disappointed by the time you decide to move on. It's too long waiting, two years. I like to get some direction in my life. I'm happy where I am. I have a good profession. And I thought, since you have the same, and we have other qualities that are compatible, I thought that would be a very good fit. Um, short of that, I respect your decision, and I would like to ask you to allow me to move on because I need to find a wife and bring certain kind of stability in my life. That's what you should do. As long as the other side, no matter what business or what emotional uh, a relationship or what venue might be, as long as you keep the offer on table indefinitely, there is no expiry date on it, the other side will take as long as that offer is available time and will never give you an answer back because they say, well, that offer stands, so I have that. No fear of losing that. I'm going to pursue and see what else is out there. And pursuing what else is out there can take you five years or more. There's no limit to it because there's so many things out there. You want to try everything. So that's why offers for any kind of business must have expiry date. So it would be invitation to action. You like me? I'm good. This and that. Criterias, standards, qualifications. Then make a decision. In business world, they say shit or get off the pot. <laughs> Of course, you can't use that in your situation, but meaning either make a decision or just forfeit the offer 
and let go. This is an opportunity. Of course, you don't have to be harsh, but you can be very understanding and don't be mushy-pushy and begging or asking or darling, please consider. No, none of that shit. Say, okay. And you just go on a date now. You, you know, she gotta she gotta make a decision. You know, you gotta you gotta make her understand that you want an answer. And be prepared, the answer may be no. Because if the answer was yes, she would have answered it by now. She may, if you give her the kind of an ultimatum, so to speak, a soft one, she may come back and say, no, I'm not going to marry you. Be okay with that. Because that, if that is her answer now, that would have been her answer whenever she gets around to it anyway. So why should you wait that long? She knows by now, yes or no. The fact that she's lingering because she's trying to see if there's something else out there. Otherwise, nobody's really fully ready or not ready for marriage. It's an emotional thing. So you can give her a certain kind of a understanding that I expect a respond, if you will. I need to know where you are. I don't want to pester you. I don't want to be a thorn in your eye or make you feel uncomfortable that you have to answer me or you have to say something that I would like. It's your free choice, but I would like to know if this is going to go anywhere. I should know now. And if it's not, I would appreciate if I know now because my interest to you has not changed. I'm there solid as a rock, and I would like to have a life with you. But if you're hesitant and you're not sure, let me know. I appreciate that and respect that. And I will move on to make a life for myself as I see fit. And this would free you from obligations towards me. And it frees me from obligations towards you. You will not think that I've disrespected you. I've waited long enough. And for me, I want to have my direction in life set. You might want to wait. Well, that's fine with me. And you can, hopefully you'll find what you're looking for. I thought I have found what I'm looking for. And that's you. And I'm unanimous on that. <laughs> but if that's not the case for you, then I wish you well and wish you find what you're looking for. But I need to know what your answer is. If it is not favorable to or compatible to what I have in mind, then I want to wish you well and I want to move on to form a family for myself. And don't go back and say, oh, I shouldn't have asked her because she said no. If I wouldn't have listened to Mehran, and if I wouldn't have asked her, she would never say no. Yeah, she wouldn't say no, but she would eventually say it. And it would be longer. So make your own decision, but that's my suggestion. You're under no obligation to accept my suggestion. Should you accept this mission, then it's all on the risk on you. We will, we will uh, uh, what is it? <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, what is it? Um, Will not recognize any knowledge of you. <laughs> what is the mission impossible thingy? Mako says, AA, give her time. Oh, I see. No, 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 no. Don't be a pussy. No, give her time. She had two years. What are you talking about? Stop giving advice, Mako. <laughs> All right. Clovis says, how to deal with Christmas, birthdays, and all important dates when we know that we will live them without our ex. so big fucking what how were you living them before you were in a relationship with your ex was there an ex involved no you were having a great time because you were celebrating for the spirit of what it was not that it has to be somebody that i um uh, you know i've had this occasions with again forever people get married and get divorced you can't constantly expect the same person that you had Christmas uh, celebrated last year to be this year and every year. Otherwise, Christmas is no Christmas. Christmas is Christmas. It's been Christmas for a thousand years and or whatever years. And it will be Christmas regardless if you're with this person or that person. So celebrate events for what they are. And if you are with someone that you love, great. If not, well, you find another love. Life goes on. C 
Steve has this past relationship flew by my eyes and I visit my parents now and they're so much older. The last 20 years just flew by. I remember being 20 and it seemed like yesterday. Makes me kind of sad how fast all goes. Well, you keep talking like that, I'll probably start crying because bloody hell, I'm 67 years old. I still remember when it was when I was 20 and doing being a uh, star in show jumping and then playing tennis and playing soccer and doing this and doing that and dating here, dating that and all the things in university and so on. And now my dad is gone. My mom is in the care home. I don't see her often because I'm not vaccinated. This fucking prime minister has turned this place like a uh, communistic country dictatorship with all the bullshit that have put us through. So there are hardships everywhere and there are unpleasant situations everywhere, but we somehow got to deal with them. Otherwise, if I want to think about all this time and all the activities and opportunities that I had with much younger um, age and much better looking, <laughs> so, <laughs> so then I would envy it and just um, die in my own um, tears. But that's not the way life is. Life constantly changes and we need to adapt and become that experienced captain because of all these turmoils and because of all these hurricanes and tsunamis and and um, storms that we have weathered, we have become an experienced captain that can keep our ship from capsizing because we can withstand all these challenges because this is the way of the river. This is how life is. You can't crumble and fold and die. You must stand strong and keep peddling. That's how you negotiate life. So you can think of that, but it's not a way, it's not a reason for your sadness. It should be a reason for the fact that you have covered this distance and you have shared that memories and those times with them and you spend as much time as you can with them and use that all energy that you're remembering with them to fuel yourself not to crumble in front of one girl who fucking left you and is having a fun with some other guy and you're here sitting shitting your pants what am i gonna do you're the same guy who's talking about so valuable things about memory and parents and life yet you're letting it all crumble in the hands of some some ass that's all so grow up and respect that what you just said and pay attention more time to your parents enjoy life celebrate life instead of allowing someone's ass dry your whole life and boat cannot be floating AA says, thank you, Mehran. You're quite welcome. And regime, what? Uh, Regarinik, oh, I am I'm butchering your name, am I not? Rasko says, have you always lived your life with this life goes on attitude? Or is it something you acquire through experience and heartaches? No, this is the only way. What choice do you have? Tell me any other choice. Listen, this is life. You either keep going or you get crushed. This is my analogy that came up many years ago. I was much younger, but this makes sense to me. Think of yourself as two horses or a horse. Think of yourself as a horse that is pulling a buggy, a cart, a buggy behind it. But that buggy is not connected to the horse with solid timber. It's connected to the horse by a chain, flexible chain. So the horse is pulling a buggy behind it by a chain, connected by a chain. So imagine that. The buggy is life. The carriage is life. Horse 
is you, connected by a chain. You're running. Life is coming behind you because you're pulling it. You have no chance and you have no choice. When there's an obstacle in front of you, nothing but to jump over it. If you don't, if you stop because of the obstacle, what's going to happen? The buggy is not stopping. It's going to crush you right on the back. So you have to jump over obstacles and keep going. Either run and build and plow and make things happen or stumble and be crushed by the fucking life that is running right behind you. Either lead or be taken over. That's your choice. And these are the only choices when desperate situations or situations such as breakups or adversities in life happens. No way life is going to say, oh, well, he's a nice guy, nice person. I'm not going to crush it. That buggy is going to crush you in the back. There is no control to it. So don't stop. Jump over. Become an expert equestrian, show jumper. Jump over obstacles and go. Negotiate them. All right. AA says, Mehran, what regrets, if any, do you have with relationship and family? None. Because I cannot control all elements involved in a relationship, but I have been able to control my reactions to them and be able to continue onwards and make things happen when things were not happening the way I wanted it. So I simply moved on with an attitude of building another. Therefore, I have no regrets. The things that happened were not of something that I could have helped or avoid. It depended on somebody else's decision or circumstances. But all I can say is if I was in control or made the right choices, in handling and reacting to the situations that were not what I hoped for or expected. And for that, I'm proud of myself. I have made great decisions. I've persevered. I've been unselfish towards my duties and responsibilities, especially my son. When my divorce happened, I never relinquished the idea of my responsibilities fully focus on raising him properly, putting him first in all situations. Therefore, to this day, even last night when we were talking about it, my son is proud of the way I have helped him to grow. My son is proud of the way I have held my responsibilities. And he says he had a great childhood and he has a father that he's proud of. That, to me, worths everything. Everything that I sacrificed, everything that I deprived myself from, for the higher goal. And the higher goal was to do my best and create the best environment for my son with cooperation with my ex. And we succeeded at that. So I have no regrets whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. I do have some regrets. I do have some regrets. I wish I could have spend more time with my dad when he would call me and say let's go for a coffee and i had some other things to do i wish i would have said yeah papa i'll come okay Enough mushy stuff. <laughs> Mako says, uh, Rocco, you seem to... Okay, you're talking to Rocco. 
Stephen says, there's a girl who I became friends with before this last girl, and we all used to work together. She's attractive, and my ex hated her because she had a crush on me. We still talk, and I vented to her about this last one. I'm wondering if I can turn it around and maybe start dating her if it comes to that. I'll see what signals she gives you. But stop crying in front of her about the last one because you're going to lose this one. Women don't like you to be so weak in light of losing some relationship. You can tell her about it, but don't use her as your psychologist or counselor. Don't overwhelm her with all the shit you want to talk to her about your ex. Don't. Just simply say it didn't work out and it's regretful with all the attention and energy and effort I put into it. It was not an honorable way or it's, it was not a desired way of um, seeing the outcome. That's it. No more. And then you could have you could end it and say, I made a mistake in my selection. That's it. Nothing further. She would catch it on that you're available and then see how she reacts and then you go from there. Mako says, Mayron, I have the same philosophy. We share the same perspective in life. Good. Clovis says, very good, the example with the horse and life, run to get or get crushed. Yeah. Um, it's not run to escape. It's run, continue running as your way of negotiating life, meaning continue leading, continue leading the way rather than stumbling on and stopping and then be crushed by the events that you did not attend to or take care or led, directed. Which means you were in control. Clovis says, is it true that the person who breaks the relationship will always focus on all mistakes of the other part to satisfy his decision? Yeah, it's not about the mistake. They even make up things. Blame them where it's not, it's not them to be blamed. All right. Okay, so where are we now? Says A.A. says, Mehran, what's your view on Stoicism? Hmm. Well, you know, the Stoicism is pretty much the run is in every one of us. We all like to be positive. We all like to run away from negative. We all like to do our best and become good at what we are good at. 
and try to make a positive energy in our lives and be optimistic as much as we can. So, uh, AA says, thank you for all your wisdom. My, my, my pleasure. Emmanuel Spiteri, it's a bit Italian, is it? Emmanuel Spiteri. <laughs> says, hi, Mehran, I'm dating other women, but I'm not satisfied. We'll date more. Says, memories of my ex keep coming up. Memories of your ex keep coming up is not an excuse for you to fuck up your life because those memories don't exist. They're in the past. Past is dead. Doesn't exist. So if you keep being in the memory and think that new things and actuality in life doesn't satisfy you and the memory satisfy you, that means you're living in the death of the past because memory is in the past and past is dead. So your life is death of the past. And that's bullshit. So better get your head out of your ass. Come out to the actuality. Live life, build life, and enjoy it at the present moment. Be present rather than somewhere that is in virtuality and doesn't even exist. But yet you want a pleasure of what doesn't exist versus what exists and it gives you pleasure any moment in the present moment. And that's the answer for you. Missing someone does not make her the right choice. We can miss our old broken bicycle that we never rode it. But as soon as it was stolen, we miss it. It doesn't mean because we miss it, that was a good bicycle. It was not working anyhow, but we miss it. We get attachment, emotional attachment to things and people. But that does not mean that feeling is an evidence that was the right choice for us. So... Let go of that missing thing to be an evidence of anything. Stick to the ones that you're dating. Stick to the one that is sitting across the table and is smiling at you and having a meal with you and laughing with you and talking with you and allowing you to hold their hands. That's the one you should pay attention and respect to, not the one that has already left you and your memory is trying duping you to think that is there any reality. Emmanuel says, thanks for your tough love. <laughs> okay. And Clovis says, do you recommend to pass through grief and take a good rest after a breakup or jump directly into another? No, you don't jump to another relationship. You solve it, you, you understand it, you digest it, and you examine it and see the actuality of the person that is not equal to how she used to be, which you liked, what she used to be, not what the actuality is, but the problem with people who can't move on after breakup, is that they keep seeing the actuality of the person with exposing or imposing the image they had of that person in the past. And they bring that and replace it with the actuality of her today, the way she's treating you. You don't see that. You constantly see the image you had of her in the past when you guys were lovey-dovey. And that's why it doesn't let you move on. You got to see her as she is, as she treats you, this way today, this day today, and her actuality, the way she is, not the way she used to be. The way she used to be is no longer. She's not that person. Therefore, you have no reason to want to be with her the way she is today. Uh, A.A. says, Mehran, how do you cope with workplace-related burnout any tips? Well, when you burn out, just stop working as hard and bring more pleasure into your life, more free time, more things that you, it's a no-brainer and it's entertaining and start socializing a little bit more instead of putting your head into computer and work. Start spending some time with nature, doing some meditation, bring the ripples of the brain down to lower numbers so you have more tranquility and compatibility with the resonance of the nature and you become part of the nature again you become stronger because you're part of the big power of the universe the energy of the universe you feel more confident and more capable and not burned out anymore replenish all that energy through your uh, entertaining activities and meditation and relaxation and spending time with nature and all that you've re rejuvenated your energy, and then you will go back to 
lower level of work or maybe same level as you see fit. Aman says, I wrote a second question. Is it visible on your site? I don't, I didn't see it, Aman. And if I did, uh, your questions are really just telling me about how you feel about this girl and you never want to do the stuff that I ask you to do to build yourself. You're just waiting to see if it changes by itself. It won't. You got to change your, you know, physical fitness by exercising and don't give a shit about what people may or may not say. Focus on your plans. Be serious about your life. Respect yourself. Love yourself. Not to wait until other people love you or respect you before you love and respect yourself. No. You lead, not follow. You love yourself. You respect yourself. You take your life seriously. You do the things that is fun for you. You do your fitness because you need to, not because how you look like in the eyes of others who are in the gym. All that will change you to have a stronger self-esteem and confidence level because you're doing them. You're not just hanging around hoping that things will change for you uh, on their own. All right. Steven says, I think my ex had too many red flags and I chose to ignore him. Yeah, you did. And you're still talking about her. I want to see when you don't talk about her anymore and talk about opportunities that are out there. That's the beginning of moving on. As long as you keep thinking that she's, it should be the topic of your discussions, your thoughts and analogies and analyzation, all that, then you're fucked. Just say, I don't give a fuck about her. That's it. Done. She had the opportunity. She fucked it up. And instead of thinking that way, you're thinking, oh, I fucked it up. No. She fucked it up. And she doesn't deserve your attention. That's the end of it. Otherwise, you keep going forever, coming back to this bullshit. Disqualify a woman when she disqualifies herself. She has already disqualified herself, but you don't want to disqualify her? What gives? Pissing me off. No. I'm going to charge you double from now on whenever you call to talk on, on Skype. <laughs> That's your punishment. If you guys don't take the advice and give me grief, the charges will double. All right, guys, it looks like that we have already hit all the questions and one hour and 30 minutes. It's good enough, I think. So I look forward to talk to all, to you guys in, uh, in our next live stream. In the meantime, oh, I forgot to say I love you all. Thank you very much for being here, giving the opportunity to share a thing or two with you. I look forward to our next live stream. In the meantime, be good to yourself and to the others. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Subscribe on my channel, visit my channel, and go through the videos that you might be interested in. Mindatseekstruth.com is making it one step away to talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on Skype and discuss what's concerning you. I'll talk to you soon.